Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 27 of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. This is going to begin a five-part tutorial on just regular expressions. So you may ask yourself, well, why should I watch five videos about regular expressions? Well, basically, regular expressions are going to allow you to locate and change strings in very powerful ways. They work in almost exactly the same way on every programming language, which is also awesome because once you watch these five videos, you'll be able to take everything you learned here and use it everywhere. To break it down, regular expressions are basically going to allow you to search for specific strings in large amounts of data, verify that a string has proper format like an email or a phone number. You're also going to be able to find a string and replace it with another string quite easily and also format data into the proper form for importing, for example. So now let's jump over and let's look at some examples. All right, so what am I going to do? Well, the very first thing I need to do is import the regular expression module. And what I'm going to do here is show you simply how to search for an exact string match. So I'm going to say if re search, and I'm going to look for the exact match of ape in the ape was at the apex. And then I will just come in and say print, there is an ape. All right, so quite simple. You're going to see there is an ape shows up. All right, so not that wonderful. Let's get into more complicated things. Let's just come down here. And what I want to do is I want to get all of my potential matches. So I'm just going to get rid of this. And I'm going to call this all apes is equal to re and I'm going to use find all this time and again I'm going to be searching for ape in the ape was at the apex and then I will just go and I will cycle through and print out all of our apes so all apes and then just print them out and you might be surprised with what you get here you see that we have two apes. Why is that? Well, there's an ape right here and there is an ape right here. So you might not want that. And I'll show you how to get rid of it here in a second. But what I want to do first is show you how to use find iterator, which is going to return an iterator of matching objects. And you're also going to be able to use span to get the location of those matches. So let's just go and let's copy this, throw it inside of there. And here I'm going to say for i in re find iterator and I'm going to say ape. But then I am going to put a dot after it. And what you're going to do with the dot is be able to match any one character or one space. Throw a colon inside of there and then I'm going to get a tuple which is what span is going to return for you and then I can print that tuple and then I'll be able to also come in and slice the match out using the tuple values. So I'll go the string location tuple location tuple one and if we run that you're going to see that it matches for our ape and it's going to start at the fourth index through the eighth and the second match is going to match for 19 through 23 for our our ape so very specific results that we would receive there so now what I want to do is show you how to match for a specific number of letters. So let's say we have animal string equal to, and I'm going to say cat, rat, mat, fat, and hat. And then I'm going to say all animals is going to be equal to the regular expression find all 
And what you're going to see here is that square brackets are going to match any one of the characters between the brackets, not including uppercase and lowercase varieties unless they are listed. And we're also going to be able to define characters in a range and define that we want to match anything except a defined number of characters as well, as you'll see. So I'm going to say I want to match C, R, M, F, and P, followed with the letters A, T, and then in our animal string. And then what I'll do is go for I in all animals and print them out. And if I run it, you're going to see it matches for rat, mat, fat, and pat, but does not match for cat. Why is that? Because this is not an uppercase C. That is the reason why. And as I said, you're also going to be able to allow for characters inside of a range. So I could come in here and let's change this to some animals instead. So some animals. And what I want to do is inside of my brackets, I'm going to say that I want to match for lowercase c through m and uppercase c through uppercase m. Again, with the at part of it inside of there and then change this to some animals. And you're going to see I match for cat, mat, and fat. All right, so different ways to go and get specific characters. Another thing you're going to be able to do is use a caret symbol. So let's come in here and we will say caret. What this is going to say is to match for everything except for uppercase C and lowercase r. And if we run that, you're going to see we just get mat, fat, and pat. And this is going to be a consistent thing you're going to see here. The caret symbol is going to be able to allow you to define that you want everything except C and R. All right. So now what I want to do is come in here and show you how to replace matches. So you're going to be able to replace items and define pattern objects. So we'll say we want to have our food is equal to, and everything's getting dark here, Rat, cat, mat, and pat. Whoops, spell pat right. All right. And now what we want to do is we want to actually compile a regular expression into a pattern object, which is going to provide for some additional methods, which we will need. So I'm going to go reg, uh, regular expression is equal to re compile. And I'm going to define exactly what I did before. So I'm going to say, C and R, and then throw at at the end. And what this is going to allow us to do is then go our food is equal to and use our regular expression. And what I want to do is replace items that match the regular expression in the string. And on top of that, what I'm going to do is replace them specifically with the word owl. So I'm going to say our food. And then we can just come in and print our updated version of our food. Whoops, and I made a little error. These are supposed to be parentheses here, not square brackets. All right, and run it again. And there you can see the different things that I determined to be our food were replaced by the word owl. All right. Now, since we are working with strings, of course, that is going to mean that we're going to have to talk about backslashes and solving backslash problems. Now, regular expressions are going to use the backslash to designate special characters, and Python does the same inside of strings, which may cause issues like we have seen previously. So let's try to get the word stuff out of a string. So I'm going to say random string is equal to... And I'll say here is, and I'm going to have two backslashes and stuff inside of here. First, I'm going to show you some things that will not work. So I'm going to say find stuff and follow that up with re search and specifically two backslashes and stuff. And I will look in random string. So let's save that, run it, and you're going to see that it says that stuff is not in there. Okay, so let's find it in a, another way. What I'm going to do here is, again, find stuff just like I did before, but 
I'm going to go and put two additional slashes inside of there. So basically, this is going to be equivalent to one backslash, and the next one will be equivalent to another backslash. See if this works. And it does indeed work, and you can see exactly where that match is. The only problem is this is kind of messy with all these backslashes. So is there a way of getting around that? Actually, yes, there is. We can come in, get rid of this part, and throw an R in front of it. And this is going to be referred to as a raw string, which doesn't treat backslashes as anything that's special. So we can just save that and run it, and you can see we still have our match. So that's exactly what we were looking for. So that's going to be it for this first video. I'm going to, of course, have a downloadable worksheet as well as all of the code and a quiz for you to finish. And in the next part of the tutorial, we're going to cover more about regular expressions where we will learn how to match any character, white space, numbers, one or more items. And on top of that, we'll learn how to tell if an email address is legitimate or not. So like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.